Thank you. I give the call to the member for Fairfax. Thank you very much, Deputy Speaker. And um, I'd like to congratulate the uh, the member for McEwen um, on his speech. Um, while it was clueless and um, totally misses the point, I, I, I give him full points for bravery. Full points for bravery. Who in their right mind from the Labor Party would stand up to speak to this motion and suggest for a moment, suggest for a moment that the Labor Party has a strong track record on defence? I mean, this is a Labor Party that had the lowest spending on defence since 1938. The lowest spending, 1.56 per cent of GDP. 1.56 per cent of GDP. Now, the Coalition's plan is to rise, raise it up to 2 per cent. And so full credit, full order, credit order. to the member, member for McEwen for his bravery. If only, if only his facts matched his bravery, then he actually might have good cause to stand in this chamber and try to um, suggest that the Labor Party actually has a good demonstrable track record when it comes to defence. Now, as we all know, the world today is in a situation of increased volatility. The uncertainty that is gripping us, both, both politically and economically, is throwing up a set of challenges that has led to the Turnbull coalition government investing in a capital program that is the largest recapitalisation that our Australian Defence Forces has ever seen. This government is looking at a spend of $200 billion. That's with a B. $200 billion, Deputy Speaker, out to the years of 2026-27. Now, ultimately, we will see us reaching that benchmark of 2 per cent of GDP spend in years far earlier than previously planned, um, going streets ahead of where Labor had left us at 1.56 per cent of GDP. Now, the hallmark of the government's approach, of course, is pulling together three pillars that historically have never worked as effectively as they are today under the leadership of the Defence Minister and the Minister for Defence Industries. And those three pillars, of course, are government itself, the Australian Defence Forces and industry. And the extraordinary thing about this, Deputy Speaker, is that the programs that the government is implementing is allowing our industry here domestically not only just to supply content but indeed to develop deep expertise. We have a situation now where Australian industry is building new industries altogether. We have the creation of high manufacturing, high technology companies that are not only starting up but are growing. We have an opportunity now with the government spending and the government pulling together industry, the Australian Defence Forces and its own spend to create a set of capabilities that positions us beautifully for export. Now, if you look across the various aspects of the Australian Defence Forces, one area that certainly grabs my attention, Deputy Speaker, is that of uh, the Army, um, and in particular the big projects around the land projects, the Land 200 and Land 400. And, as we may know, uh, many people in this House might know, the Land 400 job is currently up um, for tender, and there are two companies in the bidding for that, uh, Ryan Mattel and BAE. And here we have again a situation where the Turnbull government is investing. In this case, Land 400 Phase 2, it's, um, it's four to five billion dollars on 225 um, combat reconnaissance vehicles. Now, these are going to be best in class around the world built here locally. It gives an opportunity not only for us to use Australian steel, uh, use Australian technology based in Australia with Australian workers, but to build a capability that can then be used to export products. For us to be a net exporter of defence capability because we'll have a sovereign industry that we previously have not had. That is why the Land 400 Phase 2 is so important, with Phase 3, of course, being an extra 15 billion dollars. 15 billion. Together, Deputy Speaker, that project alone, 20 billion dollars, is the largest in the history of the Australian Army. Um, in the context of, of potential jobs for Australia, it's larger than a darning. This is an enormous coup. 
And what we have with this government is one that's determined to ensure government money is done jointly with the Australian Defence Forces and jointly with, the, with Australian industry, and thus I support the motion. Thank you. Give the call to the member for.